beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, happy Palm Sunday. But why are you here? What have you come to see today? What do I mean? Well, it's a simple enough question, isn't it? Why are you here? Did you come to church to hear a sometimes overly passionate pastor who can get himself all worked up? Are you here because you like to sing traditional theologically correct songs or to listen to a beautiful pipe organ played very well by our organist? Are you here to see your friends? Your enemies? Are you here to see the splendor of this beautiful historic church? The palm branches? The brightly polished brass upon the altar that the people did this week? The cross? Maybe you're looking for that special girl or boy or man or woman friend. It's a simple question. Why are you here? Okay, you're, you're probably wondering what's wrong with Pastor John. Why is such a question? You may be thinking, well, I go to church, Pastor. I mean, I took time out of my day to be here. Pastor, I sing the songs. I've done many things for the church, and I'm continuing to show interest in the church's program. Isn't that enough? Okay. But I still ask the question. Why are you here? And what have you come to see? Today's reading is found in the book of John. It's in part, our gospel lesson for this morning. Chapter 12, beginning at verse 20 through verse 33, I would ask if you're able to rise out of respect for God's glorious word. Now among those who went up to the worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of a death he was going to die. These are your holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify them in your truth, for your word is truth. Please be seated. Well, today is Palm Sunday. This is a very, very meaningful Sunday for the Christian church now. But at the time of Jesus, Jerusalem was crowded and bustling with excitement on this day nearly 2,000 years ago. Multitudes of people went before Jesus, waving palm branches and shouting in triumph, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. These people on that first Palm Sunday were excited and cheerful. They were thinking great things about this king who was coming down the street and who they believed would lead them to victory over all of their enemies. That's why they were there. They came to see, but they did not see. Now sure, they saw a donkey, they saw a young colt, they saw a man riding upon it, but they still didn't see. Why? 
So why are you here today on this Palm Sunday? Well, I assume we too have come to see. We've come to see a king. We've come to see Jesus. Not the people in the church, not the waving of a palm branch, but to see a king. But what kind of a king have you come to see? Are you here to, today to see a king or the king? In our text for, for today, some Greeks came with this request. John 12, 20 through 21 reads, Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. We wish to see Jesus. Now I don't know if they made this inquiry purely out of curiosity or not. Maybe they were, like so many people today, they, they were interested in, to see what was going on in the crowd. I mean, they saw the crowd. Maybe they were drawn to it. Maybe they were attracted to this man of Galilee. Maybe perhaps they came because they were really burning inside with a thirst that they wanted satisfied. We don't know. But we do see the question, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. You know, lots of people today ask this same question many times. Will you show us Jesus? Yet all they are shown in many instances is a man, some teacher, some principled leader. They are shown a Christ who is fallible and imperfect. So they see a Christ who has never been. They see a kind of legendary character who gave good lessons in morality and integrity. They see some type of compassionate figure who would be good to follow because we need this kind of a Christ to keep a good balance in our own lives between our own battles with goodness, decency, and morality. But to see Jesus as a good morals, protagonistic kind of a guy, some hero Christ, is not to see him at all. You know, in America, and pretty much the entire world now, religious convictions are anemic and weak. We're like the Palm Sunday worshipers whose roots of theological insights are very, very shallow. Our experiences with Jesus oftentimes do not go very deep. Many see Christ, but they never see him personally. They know who Jesus is. But they don't know who Jesus is. They've seen him, but they really haven't seen much of anything. And that's why I'm so interested in this burning question this morning. Why are you here? What have you come to see? Well, my friends, let's take a look at Christ. Let's really look at him. You see, if you want to see Jesus on this Palm Sunday, you've got to get away from a palm branch because a palm branch doesn't mean too much. Because, loved ones, you can have a palm branch and wave it in the air and never see Jesus. You can come to church and engage in the ceremony and the beauty and the liturgy and never see Jesus. You can meet that friend here and go out for a nice lunch on this Palm Sunday afternoon and still never have met the Master. You can sing the songs. You can be on the board of the congregation. You can give money every single Sunday for the work of the kingdom and never see Jesus. Because, loved ones, to really see Jesus is to see the cross. Because in the cross, the true purpose of Christ is revealed. To see Jesus is to see him lovingly lay down his life to die for you and for me. When these Greek-speaking Gentiles came to Philip with that inquiry, Philip, we want to see your master. Christ gave a declaration immediately, and he didn't say, well, here I am, guys. What do you need? What do you want? No, he didn't say that at all. 
The moment they stepped into his presence, he spoke these dramatic and awesome words found in John 12, 23. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. In other words, Jesus said, are you here to see me for what I truly am? Then take a good look, for the hour for which I have come into the world has arrived. And when Jesus says the hour has come, with this one word, erkomai in the Greek, he sums up everything. He declares the passion as something glorious. He proclaims the exaltation and the adoration that would follow his death as he describes the future worship and love that will be given by the masses of believers all over the world and in heaven. Jesus sees from his passion and from his death a magnificent scene unlock. One shining a path of glory for a fallen humanity reaching onward through all ages into eternity. An act that gives glory to the Father by an obedient Son. You see, the very first understanding that these Greeks were given of Christ was that he was going to die. And whether this sounds strange or not, it is the first and primary mission of Jesus because he came to die. Whether you look in the Old Testament or the New, the emphasis from cover to cover is the same. Jesus came to die. And nothing comes before or after that fact. You see, you won't see Jesus first as a good man. You won't see a teacher. You won't see an example. You won't see a perfectionist. These are secondary things that you will see if you really look for them in Christ. But if you are here today to see Jesus... You will see him first as your redeemer. You will see him first and foremost as the sin bearer of the world. You will see him as the only one who died for me. Loved ones, the one true purpose of Jesus Christ is revealed at the cross. And it is there you and I must see him if we want to see him as he truly is. The real tragedy of life today is that Jesus died and people don't believe that his death alone is the only way to heaven. So we still have the Palm Sunday crowd with us today. And that is why people can go to church, sit in the pews Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and not know why they're here. Because they never see. Now they might possess an impersonal faith Perhaps they've been through confirmation. They like to sing the songs. They're interested in what the church is doing for missions and all the homeless lunches we provide. But they've never seen Jesus. So the question is, where do you stand here then? The message of the cross, the emphasis that Jesus died for me, is very much slipping away from the organized church. The former personal testimony that Jesus died for me is becoming less and less an emphasis in today's socially oriented church. Social activism is quickly replacing personal evangelism. Where do you stand with Jesus is being replaced with, hey, are you getting involved in world problems? The cross of Christ has become a symbol for humanity's martyrdom for causes rather than for man's only hope of salvation. My friends, without a cross, there is no Christ. And without a Christ, there is no salvation. And it goes back to these words from Jesus. If you came here to see me, ladies and gentlemen of Tacoma, you must look to the cross. You see, if you came here this morning to see Jesus, then you're going to have to see the Lamb who is going to die. John 12, 32 reads, 
and when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. When Jesus said this, he emphasized to these Greeks what he was to experience and do. Jesus was telling these Greeks that he was to die to make atonement for sins and that he was to draw people out of every nation to form his church. Christ let those inquiring Greeks, Greeks get a complete good look at him, a truthful look at who he was. He let them see him as the Savior who came to give compensation for the sins of the world. Our churches today need to stop being organizations whose sole purpose is to make people feel okay with their sins and make a return back to the atonement of Christ. They need a return to the sole authority of the Bible and to the preaching and teaching of a personal salvation with Jesus. We don't want a politically corrected, watered-down Christ. We need a return to the cross. Each and every one of us need to get over this idea that we can be religious conscious and go to heaven because we can't. Those people who so enthusiastically waved palm branches for Jesus, they were very religious. They were very religious on that first Palm Sunday when they cried out, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who has come in the name of the Lord. The problem was, however, they had forgotten how to be cross-conscious. A few days later, they were in the crowd ready to murder Jesus. They never waved palm branches when Pontius Pilate let him be crucified. When Jesus was walking his beaten, battered, flesh-torn and humiliated body up that hill to Golgotha, dragging his heavy cross, they weren't saying Hosanna. No, they were saying, kill him, murder him, crucify him. Why? Because they didn't know what they were there for on that first Palm Sunday. Because they never really saw Jesus. And sadly, it is all too often that way today. In our text, Jesus with divine mastery shows the absolute necessity of his death by comparing his death to the process of nature. John 12, 24 reads, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. In other words, as a grain of wheat must first be buried in the ground and die before it produces any fruit of value, so Christ must die upon the cross in order to bring forth eternal life for those who believe in him. And the fruit which is produced from his death upon the cross are the millions and millions of children of God who see Jesus. Fruit in the most glorious abundance. That's how our loving Savior felt about the cross. He knew he had to die. He knew he had to lay down his life in order to bring life to people. Because unless he died, no new life would be possible. So loved ones, why are you here today? Do you want to see Jesus? If you do, then you must see him for who he is. You must see Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. There is one last significant point I want to call attention to today. Jesus also told these Greeks one other most important thing. He said in John 12, 26, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. So what does it mean to follow Jesus? 
Well, loved ones, it means to do what Jesus did. Does it mean that I go to the cross? No. But I do sit at the well with people and talk to them about this loving Savior who laid down his life for me. My friends, to serve and to follow Jesus is Christ's offer of a high privilege to keep close to him, to walk in the path of his choosing, not mine. It is to hear his voice and word and not rely on my own stupidity. And my friends, service and following always go together. You see, as a Christian, I bear two things in mind. First, that everyone is a sinner. And secondly, that everyone needs a Savior from that sin. And as a result, I go through life with this burning desire to walk on this earth with heaven in mind and with the desire to tell as many people as I can of this Jesus who suffered so terribly and died for me. That is what it means to be a follower of Christ and to see him as the living Son of God. So I ask again, and I ask it in all seriousness, why are you here today? Have you, my dear friends, come to see Jesus? Or is life going to go on one Palm Sunday after the other without taking a good look at the Christ? Will you be religious but never Christian? Will you always be looking for things but never find the person? Loved ones, to see Jesus is to see death and beyond it life. As we move through Holy Week towards the Easter sunrise, will you who are members of this congregation and will you who hear my voice right now online pay attention to this eye-opener of faith? That to see Jesus is to see the cross and his resurrection for your salvation because there is no other way. May God strengthen your faith and mine so that we never become merely wavers of palm branches, but that we will always possess the burning desire to see and share Jesus every day as our personal Savior who laid down his life for me to save me from sin death and the power of the devil. Glorious Father, thank you for that love, that obedience to your Father to take on all of the sin of the world for me so that I could have the hope of eternal life with you in heaven. I ask you, Lord, to open the hearts and the minds of everyone who hears my voice today so that they can see Jesus, the Lamb of God. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.